Good afternoon, everyone. It is Tuesday, February 9th, 2016. This is the Fairmont Area School Board meeting. A roll call this evening as all members of our school board are present. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from our last meeting, which was in, on January 26th? I have, and I'd make a motion to approve those minutes. Thank you, Dan. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Nicole. I have a motion by Dan, a second by Nicole, to approve the January 26, 2016 school board meeting minutes as printed. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And if you move to the agenda for this evening, um, if you go to board committee reports, um, SDCC did not meet um, due to the weather conditions, and that's moved to February 15th, so that will not, there will be no report, board committee reports. And then under other, um, due to some um, three of the board members being absent, we are going to have to change the February 23rd meeting, and we'll discuss that um, under other business. Anything else that needs to be added or changed to the agenda? If I'll not, make, okay. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda with those changes. Thank you, Julie. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Thank you, Nicole. So I have a motion by Julie, second by Nicole, to approve the February 9th, 2016 school board meeting agenda as um, amend or with the additions. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Right, we're going to move to celebrations and school community reports, and we have three this evening. And the first one is the School Board Recognition Week, which is coming up. And mm -hmm. Heidi villeneuve Schloman is here to talk about that. Good, good evening. First, I'd like to read a proclamation from our Mayor, Randy Quaring. Whereas the City of Fairmont recognizes the importance of public education in our community, and whereas... The City of Fairmount appreciates the vital role played by those individuals who, as local school board members, establish policies to ensure an efficient, effective school system. And whereas, school board members serve as a voice that enables our community to preserve local management and control of our public schools. And whereas, school board members are charged with representing our local education interests to state and federal government and ensuring compliance with state and federal law. And whereas, school board members selflessly devote their knowledge, time, and talents as advocates for our school children. Whereas, local school board members are strong advocates for public education and re reasonable for, responsible for communicating the needs of the school district to the public and the public's expectations to the district. Now therefore, be it resolved that the City of Fairmont recognizes and salutes the members of the Fairmont Area School Board by proclaiming February 15th to the 19th, 2016 as School Board Recognition Week. Thank you. <laughs> now for the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here representing Education Minnesota, Education Minnesota Fairmont. I was corrected earlier on that. We are her here to present to you these gifts <laughs> as a token of our appreciation. You will notice that these gifts may closely resemble cutting boards, but nay, they are not cutting boards. They, in reality, are serving boards that Caitlin <laughs> Martins, our elementary school librarian, has engraved um, for you. There's a cardinal on it in Fairmont and Minnesota. We want to thank you for your dedication and service to the Fairmont Area Schools. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Very clever. Very nice little... 
Yep, so if anyone wants to come and look at those, we, we'll probably all have them in our offices or homes. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Heidi, for um, reading the proclamation and your not kind words. We appreciate it. And we, and I, on behalf of the board, I think we all serve because of the kids in our community and our community and how important it is that everybody gets um, an education and gets a chance. So we just appreciate all the teachers do, and, and we do this out of uh, just our love for kids in our community so thank you thank you all right next on our agenda is the k-pals report and carrie dumeyer is here to talk about that hi good evening all right it's been my night of presenting i just got done presenting for technology at school so <laughs> i apologize <laughs> um we had two evenings this year of our k-pals which is a night when we invite our kindergarten students along with one adult to come during the evening from 5.30 to 7 to enjoy a free meal and then we um, host a reading and math um, different activities for them to kind of make and take so things that they can do along with the regular curriculum that we have at school for them to do at home so in the fall we had let's see we have about 125 students this year around approximately I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't know the exact number but um, we had RSVP'd for 60 kids to come, and only about 35 of them showed up in the fall. And then just this last time in January, we had about RSVP'd for about 40, and only 25 of them came. So we were a little disappointed in the turnout, because it is a lot of time and effort that we volunteer to put into it. Um, it's, I mean, the people that come thank us and really appreciate the stuff that we give them to take home, because it's a lot of manipulatives, hands-on things for them to do at home, and they kind of learn what we're learning at school as well. So it's something that we're kind of wondering where we're going to go from here because, you know, if we're not getting the turnout, can we do it a different way? How are we, you know, what are our next steps? Mm -hmm. So it's something that we really enjoy doing, giving to the parents, but we're not getting quite back from it what we would really like to do, the, the amount of parents that mm -hmm. we would like to see happen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. hopefully, I don't know if there's, you guys have any suggestions for that. But, but if you're making a difference in the life of one kid, just is, it's a, that's a big deal that's mm -hmm. a very big deal you know I know it's disappointing but just think of that one little kid that it did benefit was, from it from and, all yeah, of that, the, yeah. the lives you touched with yeah. it and oh yeah. and they were very I mean they the people that came they got and to spend quality, you know they got to spend quality time with that one parent mm -hmm. too and that was a big thing I mean you could see them just especially mm -hmm. if they have siblings there <laughs> hey I get mom to myself or dad to myself tonight mm -hmm. and so some really of them to too see. though it's it's you know maybe just a change or just to understand what it all you know it might take some time yeah. Yeah. before it really takes off you know I know you did it twice, you know, but it just, you know, they talk amongst themselves, talks amongst yeah. their playmates groups and stuff like mm -hmm. that. The parents, the kids, they tell about what a great time they had, what, you know, a, a positive experience it was. You know, hopefully others will say, you know, but you can never, you never know, you know, maybe it's the night of the week. Maybe it's, yeah. you know, it's, there's we so try, many other We try things. to vary that too. And I know this year yeah. landed on the same, I don't know how it landed on the same night this year, but, you know, we I mean, try to vary Maybe try to survey too. to see what the parents we do. Preferred. We well, not on not, not on the nights, but at the end of it, we get hand out a survey and say, "What would you like to see done? Did oh. you do you know? Is it beneficial? Those kinds of things, and mm -hmm. always positive feedback. So perfect. We and, think it's gone. And really when well. at back to school conferences or when they come in, is that when you talk about it too? Like from the beginning, just kind of keep b being inviting. And yes, that, and that, there's a lot and of information and stuff. the back to school conferences. So we go probably about in October, September, October, we start talking about it with them. Yeah. So yeah, I know there's yeah. always a lot. Especially if you're a kindergarten parent, new too, it's yeah, it's a lot to take mm -hmm. in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean the people that oh yeah, one else thing we did, we used the school catering this year oh. for it, and that nice. went really well. Nice. It went very well. Um, they had it all set up for us. We had the pet team there, or one or two members from the pet team, able to help serve. So we were able to use that this year, and we really mm -hmm. enjoyed that. So yeah. it made it easier on us rather than scrambling after school to go different places to collect everything. So. And it was good food and yeah. 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 Nice. well if we come up with okay. ideas or somebody makes a suggestion yeah. or pet helps out with that um yeah. we'll let you know so sounds good right. yeah i mean Any like i said for the people that went it was a yeah they, it, you know they really enjoyed it and they liked all the things that we gave them we just want to reach out to more people so mm -hmm. yeah but yeah yeah right. i don't know how you do that <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of work to do the one night you know mm -hmm. that 
It you know, taste. even you know staggering it you know two times when you mm -hmm. you know but you you never you don't know if that'll get any more people right mm -hmm. it's a lot of work mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. appreciate yeah. the time and that the effort that you have put into yeah. those and we those did um, for the manipulatives I forgot to mention this we got it through um, a grant through um, southern through is it Smith Smith uh, yeah southern Minnesota, southern Minnesota. Minnesota. okay Foundation. yep oh. okay so that was nice that's that we have that stuff paid for through that way mm -hmm. yeah. yep. all right well, good job. We'll yeah. just keep working at it. So, thank you. thank you. All right. Next on the agenda, we have the counselors' report, and Scott Curtis and Jenny Schwieger are here, and they have a lot of information to tell us about. Good evening. Good evening, board. Appreciate uh, this opportunity to kind of give a state of the guidance office uh, report again this year. Hopefully all of you have had a handout or given a handout before the meeting. Um, I want you to know up front that we are absolutely not going to go through every single slide that you're seeing today. Um, a, few of a, a few of you on the board have seen us back in 2014, so we're using a similar format. Uh, but I do want the board to know that this very much is a, a reference and truly a, a concrete responsibility list that both Jenny and I, and along with Mary Granheim, our administrative assistant, uh, perform each and every year for the, for the school district. District. So we're not going to hit every slide. Um, I would like to call the, to the board's attention, and hopefully um, you're able to see this, but in the bottom right-hand corner, this is actually a PowerPoint, um, Jenny and I will reference some of the slides or the page numbers, mm -hmm. just some things that we'd like to, uh, to highlight for the board this time around. Um, I would just simply start on slide number two. We're going to give a, just really, a, we do have an agenda this evening. Um, Jenny's going to talk very briefly about um, our counseling responsibilities. Some of them have changed in the last couple of years and, and highlight a, a school intern that we have. And then just some month by month blow it in terms of what Jenny and I are responsible for professionally not only in the school building, but also locally. And in some cases, we do have some regional responsibilities each and every year um, in our du duties for the school system. And then we'll close with you to tonight by just sharing some data mining or some fast facts that we've collected um, through our experiences this year professionally in the guidance office. So that'll be our template for you. And I promise we're not gonna go through each and every slide, but I do feel like this will be a, a very good reference for you, especially new board members to find out exactly what what Jenny and I do during the course of the school year and when we conclude we'll be more than happy to try to field any questions that you may have for us um, so with that I'm going to turn it over to my professional partner here Jenny Schwieger okay so again as Scott said thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak again this year um, so the role of the school counselor truly has evolved over you know, the many years that school counselors have been in schools. Um, originally, the focus was on vocational guidance only. Okay, so that's how counselors were trained. Um, school counselors are now trained to work in three domains of counseling, and that would be in the academic, career, and personal social areas. So our goal overall as a school counselor is to meet the needs of the, of the students so that they can be successful in school and reach their full potential. The school counseling role can also vary just from school to school. So again, we do appreciate the opportunity to share information about our specific roles and, and responsibilities, just to inform you um, who we are and, and what we do here at Fairmont. Along with the role changing from school to school, there is definitely not a typical day in, in the world of a school counselor. We will share our list of responsibilities, but in all honesty, honesty no one day looks the same. We may have a plan for the day, but a student crisis can take us on a quick detour that can kind of change how our day will look. Our positions can be challenging, but overall we very much enjoy the variety that each day brings and what we do um, each and every day. Life is never dull in the, in the counseling world, um, but we do our best to meet the students with where they're at um, on that present day. So at this time, if you'd like to turn to the last three pages of your packet, and those three pages provide a comprehensive list of all those essential duties and counseling responsibilities. Scott and I review this list every year. We just have done that recently before we got ready for this presentation today. We've shared this information with the board in the past, but again, are appreciating the opportunity to revisit them and, and share with the board and, and also our new board members. 
Appendix A um, at the back identifies the counseling responsibilities for both Scott and myself. Appendix B, which is the next page, would be those duties that are specific to things that Scott does um, throughout the school year. And then the last page would be Appendix C, and that's the list of responsibilities that, that I have throughout the school year specific to, to me. As Scott shared, we will not take time to go through each item, but wanted you to have a copy to refer to and just have an idea of what we do throughout the school year. So as we are looking at the current responsibilities, I think this is a good time to share some information about our counseling intern this year. We have been extremely fortunate to have Missy Lubinow join our counseling team throughout this entire school year. Slide number six of your handout provides some information about Ms. Lubinow and some of her background and, and what's to come for her. Uh, Missy is a 2010 Fairmont High School graduate. She graduated from Winona State University in, um, with a bachelor's degree in psychology in 2014. And then she will graduate this May with a master's degree in professional K through 12 school counseling. And um, that'll be from MSU Mankato. Missy very much wanted to be here tonight, but Tuesday nights is a class night for her as she's finishing up her schoolwork. She has been an additional support in truly all three domains of school counseling. From the first day, and, and this is the honest truth, she's been eager to learn and to get into the trenches, just very confident and, and wanting to just soak in everything that she can um, in the counseling world. She's definitely been a wonderful addition to our counseling department and has helped our um, school counseling um, area run smoothly. Part of Missy's internship this year, she asked that I share this with the board, um, she'll be completing a needs assessment and Missy has a particular interest in researching mental health, specifically in the area of eating disorders. She's been collecting data from the Minnesota Student Surveys from 2010 and 2013 for the Fairmont District and statewide. And I believe it, if it still works the way it worked when I was getting my graduate um, degree, at the end of um, her term, so this May, they will do a present presentation or a colloquium at MSU Mankato where she'll present her findings and talk about her research um, that she has collected. Um, so with that being said, we just really, again, have genuinely enjoyed having her as part of our team and look forward to having her with us for as long as she'll, she'll stay with us. It'll likely be about the second week of May. Okay, so slide number eight of your packet um, provides some information about an addition to our counseling responsibilities for this year. We, um, again, this year implemented a wellness group. This was an idea um, that really formed last year during our student support PLC work. Uh, throughout our group and, and our conversations, we often talked about the number of students that we would see presenting in the health center, um, often with stress-related health conditions, we would say. And attendance was also, also often a concern for these students. We thought it would be helpful to hold a group that would teach skills and strategies that would help those students to cope with their thoughts, their feelings, their kind of those somatic complaints that they're experiencing so that they can remain in school and work through those difficulties and stressors that, that are um, coming to the forefront for them. So Michelle Thompson, uh, Nancy Backer, Missy Lubinow, and myself did research and gathered resources, attended some workshops, and helped to develop a group. We ran a six-week group during second quarter and covered the topics that are listed on, on slide eight. So we talked about how to define stress, um, what are the signs and symptoms, and, and some of the activities we did is we worked with them on mindfulness. We had them develop a toolbox, and, and in that toolbox we would add things each session for um, coping strategies and things that they could uh, turn to to help them day to day. Talked about positive self-talk, thinking errors, and we ended with gratitude in, in a summary. Missy again played a big role in helping us get organized and, and getting the group sessions put together. The next two slides, so number nine and number 10, identify some of the data that we collected at our first group meeting and then our final group meeting. We had all the students complete a survey to collect some data. So slide number nine shows a few of the questions that we asked our students and then the answers that we collected. As you can see, the students in this group indicated an average score of 4.1 on a one to five scale of how much stress they are experiencing. They also indicated that in, on average, they scored about a 2.4 on a one to five scale of how helpful their current strategies are in working to allevi alleviate stress. So this was that initial pre-evaluation survey. Slide 10 gives the average scores for questions asked on the survey conducted at the final session. Feedback from the group overall was very positive. 
Students indicated that they are very likely to use new skills and strategies that they learned in our group to help cope in times of stress. Students also, also showed a 2.2 gain and how helpful the skills and strategies they are currently using are helping to alleviate the stress. Students' feedback also indicated that things that they would change about the group is that they would have more meetings and they would want to meet for longer periods of time. When did they meet? It was during the school day and then we alternated class periods. Okay. We avoided the lunch hours just because they would have different lunch because we had students from 7th up to I think 11th, 12th grade. We had all grade levels there okay. attending. Um, so um, very positive reports. There were some difficulties with the group and that's an important one to note is that these are students that have experienced some attendance problems in the past so now we're pulling them from class time to have these meetings but we tried to um, reduce the um, amount of issue by alternating, mm -hmm. alternating those class periods the best we could. But um, if they don't have skills or the coping mechanisms for classroom, putting them back in is not, it doesn't, mm -hmm. it's just a big yeah. cycle. Yep, oh. for sure yeah. and so we actually we've had those students in now since the group and they are you know practicing some of these strategies and have found them helpful and we do our best to, when they do meet with us and come out of class to try to do it in about 10 minutes you know let's let's work through some of these and let's get you you know ready to go back to class mm -hmm. so yeah. we definitely are seeing some yeah. positive effects of that and one of the challenges also is just finding the time to to have that group there was one group in particular all four of us were supposed to be helping facilitate the group and we ended up with just one of us in the group because the three others had been pulled away for a number of different things, just, you know, those things that happen day to day. So, um, but overall, you know, positive. And it was nice to have four of us that all knew what we were doing. So if one of us did have to step out, the other person could step in and lead. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So that was our, our wellness group, one of the things we added. Um, slides 11 through 12 provide a copy of our counseling calendar. This is all organized by month. And as Scott shared, again, we will not take time to go through each and every one of these, but just thought it'd be helpful for, for you as a, a board to see what are the large events or the things that keep us busy throughout this, this school year. So again, you can take time to, to look through, again, slides 11 through 24. So moving on, Scott now is going to talk about a couple of the large events that take place in February. One has happened and one will be coming up next week. He'll also talk about some of the upcoming events for the rest of the school year. Thank you, Jenny. Um, just a note about having counseling interns. I haven't been able to figure out over the years why MSU Mankato keeps contacting us to have uh, young professionals come to Fairmont High School, but they keep sending those to, uh, those students to us. And not always like Missy is homegrown, not always are the students and interns that come to us um, seeking that advanced master's degree from Fairmont. So we, we feel very fortunate for whatever reason that MSU Mankato um, has reached out to us in our department to, to actually host counseling interns and if I'm not mistaken we may have not only one but maybe two school counseling interns next year so uh, it's a responsibility that we that we do enjoy and we've had multiple over the years and and honestly I think we we very much feel like we owe it to the profession and the next generation of school counselors um, to maybe show them how we do our business here at Fairmont Area Schools and then use those skills and maybe see the skills that Jenny and I demonstrate, apply them to their own profession when they go out and get their job. So the interns keep coming and we haven't been able to say no yet, but uh, it has been something that we positively have enjoyed over the years. And I bet they bring some new ideas and things too because they're in the age group other generation than some of us and you know if they look view the world differently than we do and it's nice to have somebody to talk to about that absolutely Diane I could not agree with you more it it helps gain perspective about the next generation of, of not only college students and, and professionals but for us to continue to be able to relate to younger people you know as we we move into our careers and, and in a lot of ways I think it helps keep Jenny and I professionally young as well so yes we are open always to fresh ideas new concepts new technologies that that are out there um, as interns come to us so absolutely wonderful um, very quickly board if I may um, I'm going to highlight here some current happenings that we've got going in uh, going on in the guidance office and if you'd like to fast forward the bottom right hand corner uh, slide number 25 
and again, this will be very informational, and I'll, I'll try to work relatively quickly here. Um, last Monday, February first in the high school commons we we're fortunate enough to have Jane Dins who's the director of financial aid at South Central College come to us and drive down from Mankato to Fairmont again this year to to host our uh, annual financial aid night and I know many of you have sent students through college or in college or going to college or will have students going to college in the very near future uh, but in short that meeting is regarding the good old FAFSA form the free application for <laughs> federal student aid <laughs> that both uh, the state and federal governments use to determine uh, financial aid eligibility as students are leaving Fairmont High School and going on to a post-secondary career. When I say college, that means either a two-year or four-year career. Um, one takeaway that I will be sharing here um, next week with our current junior class that I have not seen um, yet as a school counselor and probably is going to be new for you as board members but the federal government is going to what they're calling a prior prior year um, um, financial aid form or tax form so instead of going by last year's tax returns 2015 obviously starting next year the federal government are going to use for students and families the previous two years of tax returns mm -hmm. now I, they don't share with us the formula or how that's going to work um, but my sense from Jane Dins is that the government is now going to look at the income and assets from families over two years and then maybe balance or average those numbers to give maybe a quote unquote more realistic financial aid status of the family. So one little new nuance for us in the guidance office as we're starting to talk about financial aid here for our students and probably more for for you guys as parents and and for our parents of our students is that now that the government is going to go to what they're calling a prior prior year tax return in in uh, establishing financial aid um, with that very quickly slide number 26 um, next Thursday February 18th our current juniors we're going to do another annual college planning night again when I say college I'm referring to two and four year colleges this is something that we've done in the guidance office um, in person for well over 30 years so this actually goes by, um, beyond Jenny and I's time here at Fairmont High School just very quickly we'll we'll hit with parents of this year's junior class some post-secondary planning obviously we're going to touch on financial aid um, visiting colleges our procedures to make that happen and how to go about and make that happen ACT testing and then just general generally about the college application process um, last year we had over 130 students and parents attend that that meeting so it will be next Thursday and the only reason I highlight that for the board this is something that we have done in the guidance office for decades and very simply as long as parents and students keep showing up and find value in some career and in, in college College readiness we're gonna go ahead and, and do a junior planning planning day so that will be, be is that open up. to other schools too or just Fairmont kids you know we do it primarily for Fairmont Fairmont students others other schools I don't want to speak for them directly oh. but I'm guessing other counselors in the area would would have a, a similar night uh, but we have had families from outside of our our district that have come and felt very welcome in, in attending that event and I would have no problem and Mr. Schrieger would have no problem if that that happened but the short answer would would be no we don't oh, promote okay. it at least right now um, Diane outside of our okay. our district so um, those numbers are are pretty much our our kids and our, our our parents um, very quickly slide number 27 in, in March uh, mrs. Schwieger and I will go out into the classrooms mrs. Schwieger takes current grades 8 8 and 9 um, I do registration for current grades 9 and 10 so next year's juniors and seniors and we go through our registration process there's about a three-week window um, in terms of actual work that needs to be done and I'll try to highlight that very quickly um, each one of our grade levels have about five sections of students so mrs. Schwieger and I go in to the classroom and take an entire class period talk about the graduation requirements once again the required courses that are needed the next year in their in their schooling and then any new course offerings that we may be 
be offering here for the upcoming school year. And uh, I have gotten permission to say this. I, I would like to also just share that depending on student numbers and enrollment for next year, we're potentially going to be offering five new courses at the high school. And I say potentially depending on student enrollment. And I'll just highlight those quickly. Uh, we're looking to offer an advanced placement computer science class. We're also um, looking to offer two um, college in the schools, again, very quickly, CIS classes. Students not only get high school credit, but they get college credit from Minnesota West Community and Tech Technical College. And, and the beautiful caveat to saying that is that there is no charge at the moment for our students or to their families to take these college classes. So they're for free for our Fairmont area students and their families. A CIS anatomy class, a CIS genetics class, that's number three. Uh, Mrs. Tonder has expressed interest in a cadet teaching class. And as we all know, there's a relatively or maybe even a significant teacher shortage, not only here but across the state. And Mrs. T Tonder is very much earmarking current high school students that may have an, int an interest in teaching. And she plans to maybe take them out, I don't want to speak entirely for her, but to take them out after some, some training and, and some classroom presentations out into the elementary and get some real world experience for our, for our high school students, maybe with kids at the elementary um, or upper levels. Um, and that looks like it's going to be themed cadet teaching. And then also looking to potentially oh, um, add a college in the schools in an advanced placement world history class. So this is kind of exciting for me. I know hopefully that doesn't sound too dull, but I very much <laughs> enjoy being able to, to share with the board and, and share with our students and families some potential new, new course offerings. Uh, so hopefully that, that comes across uh, appropriately. Um, very quickly, I would highlight so just some quick data mining pieces. And this is very unusual, and I, I don't have an explanation for this one. But slide number 30, um, since last May, Mrs. Schwieger and I document how many new students we, we register and sign up for classes in our district. And I won't go into great elaboration here, but I would just say it probably takes between two and a half hours and three hours of actual time from when a student and family presents to Mrs. Granheim in the guidance office to complete all the information that, that we need to get them enrolled in our system, to do an academic history of transcripts from previous schools, to give a building tour, because we want all of our students to feel welcome um, and get accustomed a little bit to what our building looks like and how you how you move through the day here and we also have done a shadow day for years for many many students so if we have a brand new student in the district we'll find a student that's currently at FHS um, that's in good academic standing has a positive social group involved in in school and hopefully has similar likes as the new students as the new student and we actually have our new student shadow with our current or existing student for a day before they start into their own class um, their own classes and and that's a step that we saw a need for several years ago or many years ago and it's really been become really um, become a part of our orientation process for brand new students in our district to take a day to get to know at least one person and then their student host for the day will introduce them to their friends they sit together at lunch and and hopefully you know a day isn't a long period of time but to give them a transition day to feel welcome in our building before the new student actually starts um, their own class schedule so the quick takeaway is since last May we Jenny and I have enrolled 76 new students into our district and ironically that's typically a number that we will do at the end of the school year and I can't explain the influx into our district but I'd off, off I very much would like to suggest that I think we've got a lot of very good things happening here in our district, and hopefully we're very attractive um, to students and families that are that, that are coming and looking at Fairmont High School. And ironically enough, you're going to think I planned this, but I didn't. But as I walked into the office today and got settled in after the snow day, um, we had a family that presented and walked into our office, and we'll be enrolling two more students tomorrow uh, from Des Moines, Iowa. And I don't have 
have any further information right now, but you can actually add two more uh, to that number starting tomorrow. So it's kind of a, you know, as I look at this in perspective, it's kind of a unique experience that, that Jenny and I are going through right now. The number of, not the total number of students that we're enrolling, because I think it's even gonna grow as a school year continues, but we're at a number right now that what we would typically do in an entire calendar school year. So I would just highlight that um, just for a moment. And then very briefly, um, board slides 31 and 32, um, I just want to continue to just say in general that we so support, um, are supportive, feel supported from administration in the school board. Um, our students are having more and more complex needs. Um, from out of home placements, from mental health placements, from chemical health placements. Uh, we work directly with law enforcement in some circumstances and situations uh, to working with human services. Um, and we're actually seeing a few more homeless students and to try to help kids that are coming to us. And there are lots of reasons and it's probably longer than this presentation to have this dialogue but really genuinely do not have a caring adult to go home to. And it, it, it's really even sad for me to report that um, to you as a board and in this report. But I also think it's very good for you to know is this is really a current reality right here and right now in our community. So Jenny and I um, have worked this year and even this week um, with the entities that I that I have have just mentioned and we just want you to know that we continue to 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 feel the support from above us in meeting the social emotional and mental health needs as well as the academic needs for the kids that we we serve here in in district uh, 2752 I did not mean to end on a somber note by any stretch of the imagination um, yet with that said I think there's some perspective here um, to share with really our current reality with some of our students and their very complex needs so with that, I very, we very much thank you for the time this evening. We would be more than happy to field any or all questions that you may have um, in any one of those domains or just anything in general. So thank you. Thanks for the report. Um, I have spent some time with Jenny and Scott in the last week um, in attendance appeals and at, at the student support team. And the kids that are... Um, having mental health and family issues and homeless issues they're not slipping through the cracks it, it these people and the administration and there's and the teachers at school know who these kids are and try to do interventions and help them we have a little clothing store supply when kids don't have are homeless and don't have anything to wear we have supplies of those we have food supplies we let them take showers it's just amazing that these kids you know someone's got to care about them and scott and jenny are two of them and michelle thompson and nancy backer and kim niss and andy trado they're all very aware of these kids and um we're very fortunate to have such caring people or the teachers too that care about these kids and so they're not slipping through I mean, we do what we can for them in the time we have, but they go back to not so good circumstances, and it, that's what's sad. You know, yeah, we can help them all we want. So we appreciate all that you do for that and for those kids too. Thank you, <clears throat> Diane. Where do the supplies for the those resources come from? Clothing, food, school supplies. Various donations from. But do, do, does the community even? Are they even aware that there's that need that? I think Michelle Thompson does a lot of work with that. I don't know exactly what her plan is, but. Right, and I don't know for sure how she does the outreach, but I know she um, talked with the group, the child study group here in Fairmont, and that's where a lot of the donations began. And so we, we received more donations than we had room for. So now Kim has provided us some space to, to keep the clothes and, and the school supplies. So, I mean, that was just one organization. I think Amy Becker also, through her efforts at the elementary school, coordinates with Michelle to different you know outreach. Um, so if someone in the community had donations, I mean, who would be a contact person? I, I guess I'd probably start with Michelle Thompson okay. or Amy Becker. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
and then they the social the, workers, the social at workers, school. and yeah. they seem mm -hmm. to be the one that are that are coordinating it, and then informing us as other support staff mm -hmm. where we can go to get those mm -hmm. materials and and mm -hmm. basic mm -hmm. needs. Yeah, good question though. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, another question regarding. I mean, you, you guys have an incredibly difficult job, and and it's it the the. The environment, the college environment, the, the job environment the kids are, are going into is always changing. Do we have any way of, of getting feedback from recent graduates to find out if we're adequately preparing them, if we're missing anything? I mean, how do we keep real-time assessment of, of, of what their needs are? Absolutely. That's, that's a very good question in terms of student feedback. Um, Superintendent Brown is actually engaging in a student survey that I believe is going to take place this spring um, to actually track our students when they graduate probably for five or, or ten years after after they leave our hallowed halls at Fairmont High School. Um, to answer you that your question, before I came on board here at Fairmont, there was a time before I came where the school reached out Typically, it was through the guidance office, is my understanding, to survey parents and, and students after they graduated. As you can imagine, over time, there probably wasn't a high degree of feedback, so that piece um, seemed to die, to die down. Um, but I think the, the mechanism of a current student survey um, that may be coming forth here in our district and maybe even our building specifically to elicit that feedback from our current current students and, and families once they leave Fairmont High School absolutely I think would be be very much um, from a data driven point of view to, to see what our what our kids and families are are doing after they graduate what was their perspective of their experience um, I'll just speak for our building in the junior senior high school and then where do our kids end up five years down the lo down the line are they graduating Graduating from high school are they finding gainful employment you know are they even finding jobs and I think those all Rufus um, are very key questions that I think we need to to ask as a district to get feedback as a system so we can even maybe more clearly define our roles and how we can be helpful in the in the guidance office okay. so I believe a, a school survey is going to be on deck here in the very near future if, if I, my understanding is correct so we'll be looking for it soon Okay, very Thank good. you, sir. Any other questions for Mr. Gertis or Mr. Swieger? Okay, I don't know where. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, you're just going down there. Okay, next on our um, agenda is the superintendent's report and calendar, and you left your chair. I didn't know what I was did. happening. I did. Well, I thought so. I do something different to be down here tonight. Uh, first of all, the school calendar, uh, if you take out your pink sheet and just change the first one, uh, we've rescheduled the SDCC meeting for Monday, February 15th, and that will be held in the William Bud Room at 345. And we have asked the three members of the Staff Welfare Committee to attend that meeting. We're going to be discussing uh, potential future changes in the QCOM plan with the SDC members. And then the CER committee is going to meet uh, on Thursday. And uh, at the very bottom of the calendar, February 23, we're looking at canceling that meeting, uh, the February 23rd school board meeting. Uh, I want to just focus your attention a little bit on the enrollment report. And Scott and Jenny did a very nice job talking about the number of students. We've seen a very stable uh, number of student enrollments this year at the high schools, particularly. Many times, at the semester time we see a lot of students leaving and we did not see that this year and if you look at the enrollment report we're up a couple of students uh, at the high school we're up to uh, 805 at the high school 898 at the elementary and as Scott mentioned uh, looks like we're going to have two more folks from the great state of Iowa uh, joining us uh, <laughs> so we're sure they're gonna we're sure they're gonna be wonderful students coming from that southern state of Iowa um, Another new thing, uh, the uh, Jim Davison and I, on, on Friday, we're going to start going into the sixth grade classrooms. We'll be spending three days 
with the sixth graders over the next two weeks to implement the Minnesota Career Information System junior version. And uh, the students will actually be going in and creating and implementing an interest inventory. They'll be doing three different interest inventories. And uh, that will start their profile that they'll use to transfer into the high school next year when they go into the Minnesota Career Information System at the high school. And uh, we're actually going to start that in the sixth grade. And so that will be something that we'll implement starting on Friday. Tomorrow uh, at noon, the uh, Southern Plains superintendents, uh, there are five of us, six of us now, and we're going to be meeting with uh, Senator Julie Rosen from this area. We're going to be meeting at the Southern Plains office to talk about uh, some of the legislation uh, ideas that we may have for her to consider um, in the upcoming session. They're going to start meeting in March, and this is a good time for local legislators to meet with uh, uh, superintendent so we really do appreciate that about a month ago the regional superintendents met with uh, representative Bob Gunther and other state representatives in the region of Mankato but tomorrow we'll meet with uh, Senator Rosen so that should be good and as Scott mentioned the grad survey we are we actually purchased the service the service this year so uh, at the end of April or beginning of May we're going to survey all of our senior students that are graduating. They'll be doing a graduation survey. And then every, in two years from that time, they'll, the, this company will contact those students again. And uh, they'll do a two-year follow-up. And then five years after they graduate, they'll do a five-year follow-up. And, um, and the idea behind that is that we'll try to track uh, exactly what's happening to our students, uh, to our graduates, and uh, where, they're, where they're going and what are they doing. I, I just heard a report the other day that 53% of students that are, have college degrees, recent college degrees, are either unemployed or underemployed. And so uh, today I had the opportunity, I went over to Jackson for about an hour or two, uh, visit the uh, John Deere dealership and uh, I took a tour of their facility and it's amazing uh, the job opportunities we have that are so close to us. Uh, they're looking for individuals to go into the maintenance area uh, and, uh, and working with John Deere equipment it's not just uh, you know working on engines it's really high-tech stuff they're really doing a lot of a lot of technology so it was really interesting to take a tour of that and they're very interested in the programs that we have here and um, I want to just make a comment too. We do have a very caring uh, faculty and support staff at uh, this community, and our community is very fortunate to have the school board that we have. And that's why I came down here tonight. Uh, I do have certificates for each of the board members, and um, I want to point out that uh, one of the unique things of uh, school boards in this country is that we do have elected uh, school boards that really, you know, there's an old saying in politics that politics is local, all politics is local. And decisions that are really important to people, whether it's at the city council level or the county commissioner level or the school board level, they're done by local folks that are elected that live in this community that have a vested interest in the future of this community. And school board members are so important. And uh, we're fortunate, and I got to tell you, I think this community is very fortunate to have the school board that we have. Um, I've been involved in the school business for over 40 years uh, been an administrator now for 21 and um, when I go to different superintendent conferences and different school board conferences um, not every school is as fortunate as we are uh, we have a school board that works very hard they work very closely together they're very respectful for each other and uh, you don't see that in every community and we're fortunate to have that here I just want to point out that one thing that school a lot one thing that our community may not understand about school boards, you know, we meet twice a, year, twice a month, um, and we meet for usually an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. And uh, but that's only the minuscule amount of time that school board members invest. Uh, school board members are very busy all throughout the month. Uh, they visit uh, classrooms, they visit sporting events, they go to musicals, they go to concerts. Uh, but more importantly, we do a lot of our work in the back rooms, I should say, and they're open, by the way. They're not secret, but we have committee work. And I'll just highlight some of the committees that we have. We have the Staff Welfare Committee, 
which is basically the personnel committee. And the personnel committee is in charge of hiring and, and doing the staffing levels. Uh, it is involved in the contract negotiations for the teachers and the custodians and the administrative assistants. It makes, uh, does the contracts uh, negotiations for the bus company and the food service program. It's a very, very important committee. The other big committee that we have is the operations committee, and the operations committee uh, works with uh, the building and plant, the equipment part, uh, whether it's technology purchases, whether it is the uh, resurfacing of the uh, track or resurfacing of the tennis courts or the parking lots, the roofs, the things that keep the, the buildings and, and the equipment together. And we have the curriculum committee, which meets periodically to look at what classes our students should be required to take and what classes we should be offering as electives. Uh, we have a policy committee, which uh, we're going to start up again in the next few weeks because we have a number of policies to go through. There are a couple hundred policies that the school board uh, association has in the state of Minnesota, and they recommend that we go through these policies at least every three years, and uh, we're going to start that policy work again. And we also have the CER folks that uh, meet uh, periodically, monthly, and we just have a lot of meetings that go on. And I think the community sometimes, they look at a school board and they think, Jesus, that's an easy job. They only meet two hours a month. When in fact, school board members meet hundreds of hours throughout the year. And the most important thing, I think, for school board members is that you're the local ears of the community. Regardless of where you are, whether you're at church, whether you're at, at a grocery store, at a sporting event, I'm sure you have people sitting by you and talking to you about the school and giving you some ideas and sharing concerns that they have. And that's what representative democracy is all about. It's about local folks being elected to represent your community for the best interests of our kids. And so I want to thank you all for being members of the board. And I do have a certificate for each of you. It's kind of nice to get all these fun little <laughs> things here, you know. <laughs> and if you average this, the value of this and the average of this, I'm sure it's less than $5. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, too. We can't accept <laughs> gifts. But we appreciate um, the recognition. You, you know, we're not doing it for that. We're doing it because we like kids and we like our community, and that's what we're, we wanted to serve. And so that's why, that's why I ran for the board, and I, I've enjoyed my, I've been on since 2008, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. And you know, there are tough decisions to make, but we do it um, cooperatively. We talk it out. Um, I don't think I've ever seen, and I've never been in a meeting that's been angry or crying or kicking or anything. So I just appreciate all that. Yeah, it's it's very, it's very professional and. Um, there's always two sides to every story. There's always two sides, so it's, we have to listen to everything. So, appreciate that. Anyone else? Have I appreciate the recognition as well, and I I agree with you, Diane. You know, we do this for the kids, and how I look at it too, it's an investment in our future, but not you know not only our future, but but our children's future. But our children will be you know, taking care of making these decisions for us. So it's our responsi responsibility to get those children to that ability to take over jobs. You know, we talked about counseling, talked about, um, you know, coming into the teachers and, and replacing our teaching staff and all that. You know, it's just it's just that circle of life that needs to go around. But, you know, it's that investment. And it's not just for even Fairmont schools. It's, it's for all the kids in the community, our surrounding districts and that as well. But, you know, what we can provide for them will help them to be better citizens, help them to be the better caretakers of our lives. Because someday we won't be able to do this decision-making stuff, we'll leave it up to that next generation to do it. But like I said, it's an investment, so. Mm -hmm. And to be better moms and wisely. dads, too, you know, yeah. this do parenting and all, just all the things that yep. go into becoming an adult, so. All right, so thank you very much for the recognition. All right, we'll move to financial business. We have a donation, Dan. Uh, yes, fine, the donation in Appendix A 
and uh, I would introduce the following resolution and move for its adoption. Whereas the harvesting of corn planted by WFS on school district property yielded a donation of $5,404.26. Whereas Myron Moeller donated his time to harvest the corn. Be it resolved by the Fairmont Area School Board to gratefully accept this gift. Thank you, Dan. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you, Nicole. So I have Dan introducing the resolution and Nicole with the second. And so we have to voice vote on this. So Danielle? Aye. Dan? Aye. Chair votes aye. Nicole? Aye. Julie? Aye. Rufus? Aye. The resolution is adopted, <clears throat> and we thank WFS and Myron Moeller for their donation and the harvest and the work to the um, for the um, egg program. And when you include the uh, the donation previously for the soybeans... That is just shy of uh, ten thousand dollars. Is what it ended up being this year. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Thanks, Dan. Um, now we'll move to financial reports and bills. And Sue Nelson, the biz our business manager, is here this evening. Good evening. Good evening. Tonight on the agenda, we have the approval of the January two thousand sixteen treasurer's report, wire transfers. Um, that should be January twenty second through February third, and the payment of the February ninth bills. So beginning with the January 2016 Treasurer's Report or Cash Balance Report, um, you have a listing there that shows by fund in each different account within um, each fund and what the end of the month cash balance is. And then on the flip side of that, um, at the top, we have our expenditure report for January 2016. So on the left, we have our different funds. And then we have our um, current school year budget that the board has approved in the budgets um, 23441000 Our monthly expenditures in January were $3,648,000. Um, the largest was in debt service. Um, when we pay our debt service bills, we pay those twice a year, and those payments are due prior to the 1st of February, so those were made in, in January, and then we also pay um, prior to the 1st of August, so they're paid in July. Then we have our year-to-date expenditures, which are $11,764,000. So overall, we have spent 50% um, of our budget. Um, looking in the general fund, we're at 43% of the budget. And then I kind of look at that to see if it makes sense. Well, for teachers, their pay starts in September, and um, this includes their January pay. So that's 42% of their pay, so we're at 43% of budget spent, so that looks good. Um, for our 12-month staff, um, they're at 58% of their pay. So just kind of look at that and, and ask myself if that makes sense. And then looking at debt service, we're at um, just about 100% spent there. Okay. And then going down to the transfers and wires from January 22nd to February 3rd, and we have um, wires and transfers for that January payroll. Um, and then on the bottom, our payroll disbursements for the month of January um, total 927000 do you have any questions? Not, then I can move to the checks dated today, February 9th. Just a couple to bring to your attention. Um, check number 58057 made out to CDW government. Um, that is ordering laptops and um, things like that using our Pie and Hunt grant dollars. A few meetings ago, the board approved um, those grant dollars, and so their, their products are being ordered and received. Um, check number 58070 made out to Luther College. This is for 10 students who will be attending the Dorian Band um, Festival on February 28th and 29th, and this is their registration. And then check number 58081 made out to Region 2AA, and this is um, for the gate receipts for the girls' hockey section game that we hosted here on February 3rd. So once that gate receipts are collected because it's uh, we're hosting it, we forward those gate receipts on to the, to the region. Okay. Any questions on any of the checks in the register? Um, Julie and I did meet prior to the board meeting to review things. If there are no questions, I then would um, move to approve the January 2016 Treasurer's Report, wire transfers for January 22nd, 2016 to February 3rd, 2016, and payment of the, Jan the February 9th, 2016 bills. Thank you, Julie. Is there a second? Second. 
Second. Thank you, Rufus. So I have a motion by Julie, second by Rufus, to approve the treasurer's and financial report as presented. Any further discussion or questions for Sue or Julie on the report? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Sue. All right, um, old business. We have nothing under old business listed on our agenda, so we'll move to new business. And I'm going to have Superintendent Brown talk about the budget resolution process before we run that. Sure. Thanks, Diane. Um, every year about this time, uh, school boards are asked to uh, pass a resolution uh, just in case they have to make any budget reductions. And so uh, this is worded a little differently than past uh, resolutions in that it states uh, that due to the financial condition of the school district that we may need to reduce expenditures. At this point, and looking down the road, and looking at the stability of our student body and looking at the uh, fund balance that we have, uh, we do not expect to make any reductions. However, in this day and age, we have to be cautious and be um, ready to make some reductions in case we have to by the end of the school year. So uh, this is a, kind of a pro forma a resolution that we're asking the board to approve tonight. But um, I want to make it very clear to the faculty, staff, and the community that at this point we don't expect any reductions need to be made. So just a formality so for be to be able to operate in a um, responsible manner is is what we need to do this for. So. Well, I will introduce the resolution um, and move its adoption. The resolution directing the administration to make recommendations for reductions in programs and positions and reasons for those recommendations for the 2016-2017 school year. Um, is there a second for that? Second. Thank you, Rufus. So any um, further discussion on this resolution before we vote? <coughs> All right, then we'll vote. Danielle? Aye. Dan? Aye. Chair votes aye. Nicole? Aye. Julie? Aye. Rufus? Aye. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda is we have a memorandum of understanding to talk about, Rufus. Uh, the Staff Welfare Committee reviewed and approved the enclosed memorandum of understanding for uh, Bob Millette to retire at the end of the 15 16 school year. Uh, Bob has indicated his intention of retiring and in order to make sure that uh, he's not penalized uh, in terms of insurance and that we have enough time to replace that position before the end of next or before the before the beginning of next year that's the purpose of the resolution so I would therefore make a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding relating to the re retirement uh, for Bob Millette. Thank you, Rufus. Is there a second? I'll second it. So the motion was offered by Rufus and a second by Diane to approve the memorandum of understanding related to the retirement of Bob Millette in Appendix C. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And then... Um, no personnel items this um, month. And then how about committee reports? We have nothing, but we do need to discuss on the February 23rd board meeting. Danielle is not able to attend. I'm not able to attend, and Julie's not able to attend. Therefore, we don't have a quorum. We need four members of the board to have a quorum. So um, I w will offer a motion to cancel the February 23rd school board meeting. And I further move that if there becomes business necessary that we would um, implement our procedures to have the notification in three days and then have a, an emergency board meeting. So is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Julie. Is there any further discussion on that? So the next meeting would be March 8th then? Is mm -hmm. that what we were looking at? Yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right. If not, then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, so no meeting on February 23rd. Anything else that needs to come before the board? Oh, I do have one. Um, Mr. Murphy's Celebration of Life is coming up on February 20th, which is Saturday, a couple Saturdays. Do you know the time? Any? 
It's in the it's in the obituary. Or it's been yeah, in the I website. wasn't sure at the time, but it's at, going to be at school. At the high school. At the high school in the I gymnasium. So, um, if anyone's interested in attending, that will that's where it's at. Eleven to one. Eleven till one. Mm -hmm. So. Saturday, um, February twentieth. Yep. Right. Yep. In the high school gym. So. And Diane, um, is the survey still open? Yes. Okay, so I'd just like to remind everyone that the, the survey for for parents is available for, is it through? It's through, this, through the rest of this week. Yeah, through this. So if you're a parent or if you know a parent, encourage them to 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 do the survey. We, we need your feedback. Mm -hmm. So did you, they get an email where, with yeah. the link to it? Yeah, that's right? that's we get an okay. email and then you just click on the link and it'll take you right to all the questions. And yeah, it's a quick quick survey. It didn't take mm -hmm. you very long to, Five to do minutes. it. Five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm a parent, but not of a student, so I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it either. Didn't get it either. Now, Mr. Murphy, I've just pulled up the website. The visitations four to eight on the nineteenth. And the memorial service is at 11 o'clock on the 20th. Okay. All right. That's what the, the website says. So, so. All right. All right. Anything else that needs to come to the board? Can I just ask Joe or, or anybody uh, who would know? I had a couple people ask me uh, when it comes to the recent snow days, uh, or do we have any uh, time that we have to make up because of that at this point? Contractually, the teachers uh, have to make up their days because they are scheduled to work so many days. And so in the past, what we've done, right now we've had, what, two, uh, three snow days. Three, three snow days. And, and one early out and one late start. Uh, the, the students, however, the state statutes changed a few years ago. Students have to be in session so many minutes. And we have enough extra minutes built into the schedule at both the elementary and the high school that it, the students at this point will not have to make up uh, any time. And, uh, but the teachers will have to uh, make up those three days at the end of the school year. And uh, we, we still have plenty of uh, days built and in. That's um, pending on what the whole March. rest of the that's, winter that's season goes. February and March, we're just that, getting started That's in what February. I was leaning towards, yeah. So at this point, uh, we don't have, the students don't have to make up any time. But if we get you know, three, four, five more days, and they may have to. Yep. That answers our question. And I want to apologize publicly for calling at 440 in the morning the other day. Uh, usually I don't call until about 530 or so, but... Um, the kids didn't mind. Pardon me? The kids didn't mind. They didn't mind? Didn't <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, I got a phone call at 4 o'clock from one of my colleagues from the West, uh, from Martin County West, and so we started the phone tree already. At the, we called the TV stations and the radio stations, and, and uh, I went ahead and just decided to fire off the the voicemail at uh, 440 and I had a few comments that maybe that was kind of early yeah, but uh, that's really early but at least people knew in advance <laughs> what to do some of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm gonna say not for everybody not, you were up <laughs> okay yeah. good all right good mm -hmm. thanks all right anything else all right I'd entertain a motion to adjourn I move to adjourn thank you Nicole is there a second Second. Okay. All right, Julie. So I have a motion by Nicole, second by Julie, to approve adjourning the school board meeting at 6.06 .06 p.m. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone.